cold My hometowns are coming in sight If you think I'm happy, you're right Six days on the road and I'm gonna make it home tonight The people of Memphis and Nashville haven't lost the Scots-Irish taste for talking talk. Are you looking good all the way behind you? The phrase, put the pedal to the metal, is a phrase that was used when CBs first came along as lingo for hammer down, put the pedal to the metal and come on. A concrete cowboy is someone that just gets out there and he just hammers down. Uh, he's just a gear jammer. Uh, he's kind of a raw hider. Uh, a raw hider is someone that gouges on a truck, treats it rough. Uh, he doesn't care about how he gets the gears crossed up or uh, he's just rough on equipment and they don't stay around long. In the jargon of CB radio, truckers speeding in their rigs or rides are always on the lookout for police, whom they call bears and county mounties. Or county mounty. A county mounty is more or less a county cop. Uh, your state bear would be Smokey the Bear or Tijuana, Texas. Uh, a two-wheel motorcycle bear, we call him Evil Knievel. When we say a bear does a flip-flop, we mean that he's, he's turned and went, like, if he was going westbound, he has turned around and started back eastbound. And he's shooting radar. Today, this Midland accent is spoken by Americans who have no trace of Scots or Irish in their blood. But it was the hard-driving Scots-Irish who spread it far and wide. Rooted in the Appalachian Mountains, influenced by English and German, its deepest source lies, as we've seen, in Northern Ireland and in Lowland Scotland. Like a long list of American presidents, Buchanan, Polk, Johnson, McKinley, Jackson, Grant, Harrison, about 10% of today's Americans, some 22 million people, can claim Scots-Irish ancestry. These men were lowlanders, as we've seen. But there is another Scotland of misty glens and skirling bagpipes, stirring tartans and highland games. And the men of the highlands also had what Samuel Johnson called this epidemic of wandering. The Highlanders were Gaelic-speaking Celts who were scorned by the English and lowland Scots. James VI called them utterly barbarous. Since the 18th century, their language, Scottish Gaelic, has been driven almost to extinction. It survives on remote islands like Barra in the Outer Hebrides. Many inhabitants will be influenced by the English of the airwaves, but Scots Gaelic, or Gaelic, is still the language of the post office and the harbour master. Hello. Good morning. Be stay at Lew Joe Yahawk. Lew Joe Yahawk. Shell. That cheerio, ma. Somebody inquiring what time the ferry would be in. In Barra, English, which is spoken throughout the world, is still an alien language, and before the ferry, virtually unknown. English is like a foreign language to me. Before I went to school, it was very little English we spoke at home. It was after we went to school that we learned the English. Now we've got a bit of English anyway, but it's mostly still Gaelic. Barra is a remote island. The ferry comes here five times a week from Oban, and it takes about six hours. Wind and tide have kept Barra isolated, preserving its Gaelic traditions. We get very bad weather, strong winds and rain. It's very open, as you can see. Nothing could be further from the popular idea of a Scots accent than John MacDonald's lilting sing-song. Captain Ferguson's been off and on here for quite some time. No, I'm a chips. He's captain on the Iona. 
the captain's got to decide whether to make the pier, just depending on the direction of wind. If it's on to the pier, it's hard for him to berth in alongside the pier. And if it's soft, it's difficult sometimes to make the pier. The ferry is the main lifeline to the island. Outsiders, people without the island, as the locals say, often think the Highlanders sound Irish. In fact, much of the Highland culture does come from Ireland. The kilt, the bagpipes, even the Irish surname prefix, Mac. And on Barra, the old Highland game of shinty, very like the Irish sport hurling, is taught by the local priest, Father Colin McInnes. When we hear a Gaelic speaker speaking in English, it would more resemble Irish, because the source is the same as regards the Irishman as it is for the Highlander Islander, that is Gaelic. And it has the same rhythm and very often similarity of construction and so on. The English spoken here is a beautiful, sweet-sounding, rolling, soft type of English. It is a very comforting sound compared with the whiskied, fast-moving accents you get from the cities and towns. The people of Barra speak Gaelic as freely as English but their language faces extinction. It is in remote places like Barra that you can see the wounds inflicted by world English on a traditional local culture. Our spirit in the highlands and islands is something superbly, supremely ours. We are like all minority groups, a small freshwater loch being invaded by a huge ocean. And we are authentically Celtic, Gaelic, and have a distinct culture which has contributed a lot in the past and I'm sure will contribute a lot to our future. Gaelic is their ancestral tongue, but even here, when the game gets exciting, they drop into English. Go on, Dougie, go on! Scots Gaelic has been a persecuted language ever since the revolt of 1745 led by Bonnie Prince Charlie was defeated when the ill-equipped Highlanders were mowed down by the British artillery at the Battle of Culloden, the subject of this early television documentary. He stood on a nose the fate see the snow fell on him lightly, but in scarce one hour on Dramasi Moor, he witnessed the murder of his country. The halo Scotland's wearing black are dressed up for the sodden. Prince Charlie chose the place himself, the graveyard of Cologne. 